Ed Gein started life as an average boy in an average town on an average farm. But his mother raised him with an iron fist full of religion. He was told the outside world is evil and all women are harlots except his mother. It was even rumored that his mother had poured boiling hot water on his genitals when she caught him masturbating. Ed was sometimes bullied as a child for being strange. His mother would punish him if he tried to make friends with the local children. When Ed's mother passed away, he was like a little boy, all alone at the age of 39. Ed nailed his mother's bedroom door shut and never set foot in there again. Being raised in isolation with fire and brimstone, Ed began showing some unusual behavior. Ed liked to collect used chewing gum and dentures. As time went on, Ed began reading the obituaries and then digging up corpses that reminded him of his mother. Ed decided he wanted a woman that was more vibrant than the corpses he had become used to. Ed went into town and killed a tavern owner by the name of Mary Hogan on December 8, 1954. She reminded him of his mother. The townspeople had no idea what had happened to her. She just disappeared. There was blood on the floor and a bullet shell, and no Mary Hogan anywhere to be found. Ed decided he wanted to be a woman, so he created a woman's suit from different women's body parts. He filleted the skin off of the bodies and draped them over a tailor's mannequin. He made a vest in the image of his mother that he could wear around the house. This was his way of emulating being a woman and possibly having power over them. Ed said he had never had sex with any of the corpses because they smelled too bad. On November 16, 1957, Ed killed Bernice Warden in her family-owned hardware store. Ed brought some bullets with him that he kept in his pocket. He asked to see a 22 caliber Marlin rifle as if he was going to purchase it. Then when Bernice was not looking, he loaded the gun and shot her. He then put her in her own truck and drove her off with him to his farmhouse. Deputy Frank Warden, Bernice's son, found blood on the floor and his mother nowhere in sight. Locals reported Ed had been hanging around and wanted some antifreeze. The deputy found a receipt for antifreeze on the counter. He and his men went to Ed's farmhouse. They entered the woodshed out back and could only see with flashlights. One of the officers bumped into something hanging. He stepped back and found it was Bernice Warden's body. Hung up, decapitated, and gutted like a deer. Ed had also taken the time to clean her body in preparation for something else. Ed had quite a collection of human remains in his home once the police had arrived there and investigated. An assortment of bones, nine masks made of human skin, ten bowls made from human skulls, ten female heads with the tops sawed off, human skins stretched over chairs and seats as upholstery, nine vulvas in a box, a belt made from human nipples, he even had skulls on his bedposts and a pair of lips on a drawstring for a window shade. A lampshade made from skin of a human head and Mary Hogan's head in a paper bag. Bernice Warden's head was in a burlap sack. He had driven two ten-penny nails through each of her ears so he could tie a string to them and hang the head up as a trophy. One of the officers reportedly assaulted Gein during questioning by banging Gein's head and face into a brick wall. As a result, Gein's initial confession was ruled inadmissible. Gein's house and property were scheduled to be auctioned off March 30, 1958. It was rumored the house was going to become a tourist attraction. A mysterious fire broke out at the Gein farm early that morning. Spectators showed up by the hundreds in spite of it. After all this, when questioning townspeople, no one had a bad thing to say. He had fooled all of them. 